walk like a breeze. This breeze is not a typhoon or a gale. If you walk like you are running, then you have turned into a gale. If not a typhoon, do not do that. Walk like a light breeze that does not even stir, stir up waves in the water. The light breeze is slow and does not blow over water and create waves. Stand like a pine. Stand as straight as a pine tree. Don't shrug back your neck and look lethargic or sleepy. Stand with your chest out and back straight. Looking down at the ground when you walk is like looking at the house. Do not walk with your head too high up either. Let it be natural but straight. This is standing among the four great compartments. Also, don't look around when you walk, glancing front and back, looking left and right. The police will think this person must want to steal to crack someone's door open. They will pay attention to you, so don't glance about. Sit like a bell. Recline like a bow. Recline like a bow with the right hand palming your chin and the left on the side of your hip. This is an auspicious posture for reclining. Curl your legs slightly like a bow. There are 250 rules of compartment for each type of major compartments. Walking, standing, sitting and lying down. There are 250 for walking, 250 for sitting, 250 for lying down and 250 for standing. These are very detailed so there are as many as 250 for each type. See, it's not so easy. Add 250 for each type together makes a total of 1000. There are three sets of 1000. 1000 for the past, 1000 for the present, and 1000 for the future. These are the 3000 rules of compartments. Since Vinaya Master Tao Xuan kept the precepts strictly and a replete with the 3,000 forms of compartment and 80,000 minor conducts which so moved the heavenly beings that they brought him food. When he cultivated, he did not speak or laugh casually. You had to speak to him according to the rules of the Vinaya for him to respond. If you did not, he would not speak. He did not laugh easily. But he did not cry, get angry, or pout either. He was just natural all the time. He was not in any particular state of joy, anger, sadness, or happiness. What kind of person does not have any joy, anger, sadness, or happiness? A wooden person. A wooden sculpture has no joy, anger, sadness, or happiness. He was not happy or upset. He did not cry or delight. But before joy, anger, sadness, or happiness develops, that is just the middle way. People who keep the precepts keep to the middle way in every action and every move. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan kept to the middle way, so heavenly beings, including Lu Xuan Chang, were so moved that they brought, brought him offerings every day at noon. Despite such heavenly offerings, he maintained one meal a day. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan cultivated at Mount Chong Nan, a seemingly continuous mountain range linked to the Himalayas. I hear that Mount Chong Nan in China has many seasoned cultivators who cultivated and became enlightened there. There are many wolves and tigers there too, but they do not obstruct monastic cultivators. In fact, they act as supporters of the drama. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan cultivated there, living in a straw hut hut, while heavenly beings presented him with offerings. At that time, Drama Master Kui Chi had four stars. What was said? He said, I have tried all the most delicious foods in the human realm, whether vegetarian or not. I have tried them all, but have, I have not tried food from the heavens. 
Vinaya Master Chao Xuan has the heavenly beings bringing him offerings. Let me go there for lunch. For this reason, he went to Matru Nan to see Vinaya Master Chao Xuan. Jama Master Kui Chi was a national master too. He was a very intelligent disciple of Dharma Master Xuan Chang of the Consciousness Only School. At that time, 800 or 900 monks translated to trust together. He was a key player. In any case, he went there early for lunch since Vinaya Master Tao Xuan only eats lunch. But he waited and waited, lunchtime, afternoon, evening, no one offered any food. Both Vinaya Master Tao Xuan and Dhamma Master Kui Chi did not have any food to eat. Dhamma Master Kui Chi loved to eat excellent food, so he could not tolerate going without food for a day. This was so no small distress. You say heavenly beings offer you food every day. How come there is nothing now that I am here? Did you brag? Did you lie? Vinaya Master Tao Xuan said, Say what you will. You may say I lie, but I know whether I lie or not. Dharma Master Kui Chi said he lied, but he did not argue back. Dharma Master Kui Chi waited until nightfall, so he spent the night at the straw hut because it got me too dark to walk. So there was a fat monk and a skinny monk. The fat monk was Dhamma Master Kui Chi, and the skinny monk was Vinaya Master Tao Xuan. Although Vinaya Master Tao Xuan ate heavily offerings daily, he was not fat. Although Dhamma Master Kui Chi did not eat heavily offerings every day, he was very fat. He enjoyed eating. So he was always telling the cook to think up some excellent dishes. Dharma Master Kui Chi did not meditate or investigate Diana, but fell on the bed and slept. As soon as he fell uh, asleep, he was snoring thunderously. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan meditated and did not snore. Dharma Master Kui Chi lied there and snored in his sleep. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan was so disturbed that he could not enter Samadhi, so he was picking lies off of his body. Mother Chong Nan is very cold, so cultivators have lies from not showering too often. As the lies beat him, he picked the lies off of him because he kept the precepts he did not dare to kill, so he slowly placed the lies on the ground. There was no light and nothing happening. Dharma Master Kui Chi fell asleep too, so he did not know at all. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan continued to meditate. The next morning, Vinaya Master Tao Xuan told Dharma Master Kui Chi, Hey, how come you do not cultivate at all? You don't meditate, you don't do any practice, you lie down and sleep at night snoring loudly and talking in your sleep. I could not meditate or enter Samadhi. Dharma Master Kui Chi said, Ah, you say I have no cultivation, but I think you don't. You say heavenly beings bring you offerings, but since I have been here, I have not seen any heavenly being. Last night, instead of doing your practice, you were picking lies. You picked two lies. If you had pinched them, Dead, then never mind, but you placed them on the ground. One fell down and died, and the other broke two legs. The dead louse went to King Yama to see you. King Yama was planning to send some ghosts over to capture you for questioning, but I spoke on your behalf. I told you that you are a cultivator and hope that King Yama will forgive you. I told those two lies to fight their next birth. This is how you were saved from your troubles. And you actually tell me that I disturbed you, preventing you from cultivating. I think you have no cultivation whatsoever. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan thought, How did he know about two lies being thrown on the ground? There were no lies on or anything. How did he know? He did not dare to argue because he keeps the precepts 
so he did not speak to people casually. He simply remained patient with what other people say about him. He did not argue back or defend. Later, Dharma Master Kui Chi said, "I'm leaving. You are just pretending to cultivate here. I'm not going to wait for lunch today." By noon, Heavenly Being Lu Xuan Chang brought offerings to Vinaya Master Tao Xuan. Vinaya Master Tao Xuan, somewhat unhappy, said, "Why did you not bring any food yesterday?" Lu Xuan Chang immediately knelt down and said. Vinaya Master, it's not that I did not make offerings yesterday, but when I did, I could not enter your hut. More than a dozen miles radius around this hut shone with golden light, that was so bright I could not open my eyes. I could not see the rows in front of me. I asked the local earth bodhisattva, how come the golden light was so bright up ahead that I could not proceed? The local earth bodhisattva said, "Someone in the hut is a bodhisattva in the flesh, a living bodhisattva. I circled around a few times yesterday, but could not come in, so I could not bring you offerings. Please forgive me." Vinaya Master Tao Xuan thought, "No wonder Dharma Master Kui Chi is a national master whom even the emperor believes in. He is a bodhisattva in the flesh." He did not dare to look down on Dharma Master Kui Chi any more, so we cannot fathom the states of bodhisattvas. The sound of Shanti Paramita. We have talked about two of the paramitas among the six paramitas in the myriad conducts in the Buddha Dharma. There are four more. The third is Shanti, which is Sanskrit for patience. There is patience with production. Patience with drama and patience with the non-production of drama. Something extremely wondrous and filled with joy. If you satisfy with the patience of non-production of drama, then you have really tasted the drama, really understood the wonder and the inconceivability of the Buddha drama. By being patient, you can reach paramita. By being impatient, you can reach paramita. The sound of Virya Paramita. Virya is also Sanskrit, which means vigo. Some people mis misunderstand vigo as being diligent with non-Buddhist practices. Actually, those who really understand vigo are diligent with the Buddha Dharma. Diligent with non-Buddhist practices is merely about cultivating useless ascetic practices. There were many heretics in India, one practice that sought to answer outside of themselves, externalist practice, was that they ate grass instead of rice, keeping the cows' precepts, imitating cows. Another externalist practice was to imitate dogs and keep the precepts of dogs. These extern externalists will not do what dogs refuse to do. They will reject any food dogs reject. They only eat what dogs eat. These are the cows and dogs' precepts. There is another externalist practice of sleeping in a pile of ash. The human body is already unclean, but these externalists pile lots of dust on their bodies and cultivate in the dust. Another externalist practice is to sleep on a bed of nails. To show that these externalists can tolerate pain and practice asceticism, these are examples of externalist useless ascetic practices. They think that they are very diligent, but it is actually a different form of knowledge and view. It is not proper knowledge and proper view. This kind of diligence is useless. Be vigorous in the area of good karma rather than evil dharma, of good dharma rather than evil dharma. Being diligent with evil dharma is to go against the way. Diligent in doing good dharma, such as bowing to the Buddhas, reciting the the sutras, bowing in repentance, reciting the Buddha's name, are about being diligent with the body. 
Then there is being diligent with the mind. What does it mean by being diligent with the mind? Always cultivating thought after thought, never forgetting to cultivate the parameter of ego, but always forget you, your fatigue. Cultivating the Buddha Dharma truly, that way you will not feel tired or hungry. You will not be bothered by anything that is not according with the Dharma. Why? You are diligent, so you do not have any of these negative feelings. If you were not diligent, then you will experience problems. You will feel tired and lethargic. You figure you might as well go to sleep. This is not Vigo. Vigo is primarily based on what you do, such as cultivating the path of goodness at all times and places. That would be the parameter of Vigo. Last summer, when I lectured on the Suragama Sutra, I explained a four-line gather. Every monk or nun should remember this four-line gather. When the Buddha was in the world, monastics recited this four-line gather every day. They did not forget it at any time. I said this specifically during the summer break. I even think lay people should memorize it. Not to mention how monastics should not forget it. This four land gather gather is guard the mouth and gather in thoughts, make no bodily transgressions, never distress a sentient being, stay far removed from unuseful asceticism. Practitioners like these save the world. Guard the mouth and gather in thoughts, make no bodily transgressions, do not speak casually or gossip, watch over the mouth to prevent it from talking about this being good and that being bad, this being delicious and that being bad tasting. Gather in thoughts means to pull in all those thoughts so they do not run left to right. Make no bodily transgressions means not violating any precepts with the body. Always remind oneself that one is a left home person. Do not violate the rules. Never distress a sentient being. Do not bother or disturb any sentient being. Sentient beings include not only humans, even animals. It is wrong to make any of them upset. Monastics should not distress by sen any sentient being. Stay far removed from unuseful asceticism. Stay far away from unbeneficial ascetic practices. But do the twelve do tanga practices, avoid those unhelpful practices that do not accord with the Buddha Dharma. Do not study from heretics who dare say that they will become Buddhas in this lifetime. Cultivate according to the Buddha Dharma. Do not observe the precepts of cows and dogs. Why would people do that? Externalists do these bitter practices that are so difficult they open their heavenly eye. When they open up their heavenly eye, they see a dog dies, then enters the heavens. So they imitate dogs by keeping prohibitions that dogs do. Some other externalists see cows do that and imitate cows and keep the prohibitions that cows do. These externalists in India were short on wisdom. Although they cultivated various ascetic practices, none of these practices are helpful. Are helpful. So stay far removed from unuseful asceticism. Practitioners like this save the world. People who cultivate like this can save the world, teaching and transforming living beings. There is no such thing as being vigorous about vigo. Vigo is a drama explained to us ordinary people. In fact, the six parameters are all vigo and not vigo. Giving, keeping precepts, and being patient require physical vigo. Being in dhyana samadhi and developing prana require mental vigo. In a sense, there is no separate category for vigo. Vigo becomes a part of other parameters, such as parameter. Uh, such as prana, etc. 
giving more you are vigorous with giving keeping to the precepts closely you are vigorous with the precepts being patient more you are vigorous in patience being ever even more vigorous you are vigorous in vigor meditating non-stop you are vigorous in dhyana samadhi cultivating prana you are vigorous in wisdom studying the prana dramas you are vigorous in prana there is no vigor to vigor it in and of itself does not do anything though so not being attached to being vigorous is having real vigor attached to how you are vigorous in this and that claiming that your vigor is without bounds that your vigor applies to all six parameters then you are not truly vigorous truly understand the buddha drama and there is essentially nothing there is something when you do not understand once you understand there is nothing you say i do not have anything now i am not diligent either not being diligent is also nothing this is different from really understanding the buddha drama and there is not even real diligence why it is because you are not attached if you do not understand the buddha drama and continue to be attached to your diligence then there is no diligence since you really do not understand the buddha drama you basically do not know what is diligence not to mention being diligent this is why you do not understand the buddha drama if you really do understand you still have to let it go you still do not understand the buddha drama if you do not let it go this makes people break all attachments to marks thus being thus becoming attached to nothing attached you do not understand the buddha drama this is vigo the sound of dhyana paramita dhyana is also sanskrit which stands for the cultivation of contemplation or quiet deliberation dhyana includes the four dhyanas the eight samadhis and the nine sequential samadhis there are also secular dhyana transcendental dhyana and the most superior form of transcendental dhyana Secular dhyana are what we ordinary people cultivate. This includes the four valid qualities of the mind and the four formless samadhis. We do not need to describe these states in detail. Just work hard in your meditation and you will naturally understand this state. What is transcendental dhyana? Transcendental dhyana includes the four dhyanas and the eight samadhis. the eight superior ways and the eight liberations you are confused by these terms this is like reading a menu say uh, something may look good but before you put it in your mouth you will never know the taste of it now you know why there are different dhyanas sakala dhyana transcendental dhyana the most superior form of transcendental dhyana first comes dhyana vachyaks dhyana and others as long as you are willing to work on your cultivation you will get a taste of its flavor in the future and the sound of prana paramita prana in sanskrit for wisdom wisdom is also divided into secular wisdom and transcendental wisdom secular wisdom is worldly knowledge and intelligence what a worldly knowledge and intelligence for instance advances in science advances in philosophy and all types of information a worldly knowledge a debater who can explain principles where there are no principles has a worldly wisdom transcendental wisdom is about pursuing the buddhist path diligently in thought after thought studying the buddha dharma continuously real cultivation of transcendental wisdom means contemplating the buddha drama while sleeping dreaming suffering from sickness and pain so is secular wisdom and transcendental wisdom one thing or two originally they are one but it depends on how you use it applying to the secular and that is secular wisdom 
apply it to transcendental Buddha drama and that is transcendental wisdom. Wisdom is not divided into two. Originally, you were investigating the world's problems and you knew everything in the world is suffering, emptiness, impermanence and no self. Now let us use this kind of wisdom to investigate transcendental studies, which is transcendental wisdom. Secular wisdom and transcendental wisdom are not two. Most people enjoy a secular form of wisdom, but not transcendental wisdom. Some people enjoy transcendental wisdom, but no secular wisdom. How come? Some people are very intelligent, but keep doing muddled things, things they should avoid. Whereas the important things, the question of birth and death is left untouched and uninvestigated. Some people investigate transcendental questions but do not understand the secular dramas. We must enter the world yet transcend the world, transcend the world and enter the world, travel freely between the secular and the transcendental. If you understand that entering the world is transcending the world, if you do not understand transcend, uh, transcending the world is enter, entering the world. The ancients told us something very useful. Intelligence results from anonymous good deeds. Anonymous good deeds lead us onto the path of intelligence. Try and play smart without believing in anonymous good deeds. The smart and ends up being misled by their smarts. Why are we intelligent as human beings? It is because in life's past, we did many virtuous deeds. What are anonymous good deeds? Anonymous good deeds are not broadcasted.